What is up, lads, and welcome back, lads and ladies, I should say. Welcome back to the Pez Universe podcast, our first episode in the new year, 2020. So for that, I called in a very special man. Well, he's always here because he is the co-host. It is none other than Weza FC. What is up, man? I was going to say, I feel like I've got squatters right here now. Yeah, welcome, yeah. welcome, everyone, yeah, yeah. to the uh, podcast. Happy New Year and New Year, uh, and a Merry Christmas to you, Baz. Yeah, man. And I hope everyone listening and had, had some good holidays, chilled out, played loads of games and ate them until they couldn't fit out eat no door. more. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Because I know that's what I try to do. Um, but yeah, man, first podcast back in the new year. And obviously me and you just here tonight. We don't have any guests, just a, a little love in with me and you co-hosts. Yeah. Um, just to kind of steady, steady things on for the next couple of months. Obviously, there's going to be a load of podcasts back again now until we have Pez 2021 20, hype, which it just seems like so far away, but it's, it's probably going to creep up on us very quickly. It, no it feels so goes. weird. It feels so weird in mentioning Pez 2021 at this point. But it's, saying that Pez 2021 is coming out this year. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 very, very strange. Yes, very, very nice. strange indeed. But it's good to get back into the swing of things. Obviously, it's it's always hard to go back to work. I have a bit of a cold, so in case I... I sound even worse than I usually do on the podcast. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'm hoping that Wes, you'll have the, the you'll be the bundle of energy tonight. But yeah, uh, just I'm to, sure I can. Ca- I'm sure I can carry this. I'm sure you can <laughs> because if if anyone has been following your Twitter over the last couple of weeks, we haven't spoke about we haven't spoken since the last episode of the podcast yeah. that we were on before Christmas. But speaking of energy and speaking of segueing into our first topic tonight we do want to talk all things e-football because i personally am absolutely buzzing for you and the way that you've been you know, doing the analyst, anal- analyzing and the, the commentary in match day one yeah so we are going to start with kind of your experience of the e-football match day one um yeah. <laughs> and literally put you on the spot and just ask you how you how you felt it went and what was your favorite kind of couple of moments there and Basically, match day two is coming up. By the time this probably goes live, match day two will be done and dusted. So we're going to do a little, or you're going to do a little preview on that as well. So no pressure. But, yeah, uh, no no pressure at all. But uh, yeah, match day one was, I mean, it, it, just to take it back before match day one. Yeah, take it back. To, to, take it back. To, to, kind of, to kind of be uh, in a position where I couldn't announce, obviously, anything that I, I wanted to do, <laughs> which was which was fair enough. But to, to kind of be like almost a bull at a gate going, can I announce it yet? Can I announce it yet? Can I announce it? It's like it was basically the kid at Christmas going, "Can I open a present before? Can I open a present before Christmas Day?" I'm like, "Can I open that one?" Um, but once, obviously, you know, it, it kind of all kind of transpired and it all happened. Uh, flight to Barcelona was smooth. Hotel stay was smooth. Uh, had a nice little jaunt, or a nice little walk down to the uh, to the studio in, in Barcelona. It's probably about 15 minutes to hotel, so a nice brisk walk. Uh, that, uh, got me there. Yeah, the, the the thing was I got there super early because naturally when you are doing an event or if you are if you're in a you know you're in a different country you you're up you know your your body doesn't react in the same way you you kind of get butterflies and I was too excited and I wanted to go and see the studio as well kind of as a you know to see the differences between last year and this year obviously the the players now have a training room you know there's a lot more room about the place it feels it's a little bit brighter around the set it's no longer black it's white it's bright and it's it, there's a little bit more energy around the place mm. and um from start to finish i was i was treated so well by the by the people uh from from eFootball pro uh, to see some konami officials there as well that was super cool um and yeah general general reception of of obviously how how i did on that day was was overwhelmingly positive um you know long time listeners to the podcast long time listeners to my streams and viewers of my streams will know that you know commentary has been something i've always wanted to to do and even if it is just one you know the one match day that i do it for you know it's one off the bucket list yeah, you know it's a, it's a goal it's a goal that got achieved that i was able to do uh, and you know, to to see some of the games that were going on, and to see some of my my friends that I'd yeah, made exactly. over the the kind of you know three year I'd say three year path um, was brilliant. You know, I, I mentioned it pre pre discussion before the pod went live. 
seeing Eldridge O'Neill walk in as I'm doing as I'm doing dress rehearsal with that massive grin of his <laughs> with his camera just kind of going it's Wes it's like it's Wes it's like you know seeing you know Venom playing for the first time with Arsenal you know seeing that the Boa Vista guys who were were brilliant for debutants mm. you know to see um uh, Roxa and to see Zizou playing for Nantes just to see everybody and the general vibe about the place was, you know, it was great and, yeah. and coming off and, you know, having uh, kind of immediate feedback. It wasn't just the feedback on Twitter. It was the vibe in the studio. It was the vibe. Like I said, once, once it hit on Twitter, uh, every man of these dogs tweeting me and it's just <laughs> like, this is mad. Like, and, and like I say, it was a, it was a great experience and, and, uh, and long may they continue. You know, I, I'm very much looking forward to, to match day two. Uh, as we record, I'll be taking a flight tomorrow uh, afternoon. So, you know, all all things all well. I'll, I'll land in Barcelona, and we'll be we'll be good to go for match day two. Nice. Well, that's the thing. It, as you said there, just to to bring it back, it, like it's it's all about the experience, isn't it? Like it's yeah. It's kind of a thing where it's like, you know, anything else, anything else you do after this is going to be a plus, like, or it's going to be a positive or whatever. But you do always remember your first kind of experience of doing it. Yeah, um, I think that like when I was watching, when I was when I was watching it, and I watched, I'd say ninety percent of the stream. It was yeah. like you could feel like the excitement and the energy, and like it was just. It seemed everyone was buzzing like off the event itself, which is always good to watch because you know you're going to get some games where they are kind of like tight, you know, tense defensive displays. Then you're going to get games where the goals are flown. But yep. you have to keep the same energy throughout the whole thing. So it was enjoyable to watch the different teams play and stuff. And that's why I think match day two will be good as well. Because you've got, yeah. you've got a couple of rivalries kind of going. Like rivalries that are that are, that are are going to be, you know, settled in game in, in in the next couple of weeks over the, the course of the match day. But it's all it all adds to the excitement and the fun, which is which is what you want to see. You do need a couple of storylines going when you're yeah. watching esports as well as any sport that's just my opinion anyway yeah i mean if you look at the the match day as it is coming you know there's 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 narrative for me there's narrative everywhere yeah. you know you look at uh the the featured match which is arsenal versus man united mm. I, I mentioned it kind of in match day one stream where it was you know it's the game that you know, you would have grown up with watching yeah, Keane and Vieira, oh, and, Vieira boy. and uh, you know and watching everybody go at it you know and there's that type of atmosphere when you look at Eldridge, Cams, Ostry yeah. and uh, Almighty DS and then the other side of it you've got Alex GRD, you've got Christopher and you've got Venom. Mm. They're all combustible elements. They're all like volatile in the sense yeah. of they're all emo- they're, emo- there, like. they're all big personalities, yeah. you know. Um you look at um it's gonna be Bayern versus Barcelona. Alex Alex Algaciel's first game against Barcelona former team yeah. former team there's <laughs> you not to mention you've got you know uh Guifera and Henry Quino and the Palma who again are you know some of the best youthful players about mm. and I've constantly said it about about players who are youthful you've got to bring those guys through because yeah. it has to be something where you invest in the youth and that but that is not to say that experience hasn't got a place we saw yeah, Schalke we saw yeah. Schalke lock out Celtic you know, and, you know, uh, goal being influential, mm. you know, being the oldest player there. Zizou was really good for not, you know, there's so many little lines of narrative and then you've got return, you know, you've got players that are coming back. Uh, some of them were at uh, the international tournament. So, you know, you've got Kepa, who's then going to be playing with not, and then you've got uh, Pedro Barbosa or Joker, who's going to be playing with Bo Vista. So you have all of these different elements. You have these, are these players going to be better than what they had in match day one? Are the teams going to play better? Mm. I think I think we're going to see a better uh, quality of team because obviously we've got the past this one in there. You've got obviously the um, you've got the the the, uh, the, the, the the what's the word I'm looking for the uni- like the uniform ratings or ratings, yeah. balancing. You've got all of those different variables, and then you've got the fact that these players will have practiced over that Christmas yeah. period. And now you've got them. Going. You've got the chemistry going. So now it's a case of okay, you, your your point in the first game was is that your your chemistry wasn't there because you'd been formed for a couple of weeks. Okay, you've been formed for more than a couple of weeks now. Let's see what you've got in the tank. Mm. 
Um, yeah, and, especially as well, anything you ever do, no matter how experienced or confident or like how big your personality is, like when you're doing something for the first time, yeah. like even though these boys have been at the top, like you look at the likes of Eterito and who's Macable and them boys and any of the lads, like they've they they're, they don't feel the pressure. But I think it's just the uh, you know, it's like it's like doing the podcast. You'd be kind of your first two or three of them. You'd be kind of like, okay, I love talking, but it's still a bit nervy to actually get on and record and put it out there for people. It's like doing yeah. a YouTube video. Then the more you do it, and it also happens to be live stream. So if you make a mistake, like it's seen by not only everyone watching the stream, but it's seen by you know you guys. You have to commentate on it. You have to analyze what happened. Yeah, and it's yeah. also seen by all your competitors who are going to try and beat you every day. Yeah. Like that they play it, yeah. So. And and it's the thing. It's the thing is, is that uh, having been a a, com- a competitor of of sorts and mm. ha- being now a, a part of the casting team, there's a different shot of adrenaline that yeah. you get. It's different. Yeah, yeah, it's, a... it's it's you know the consequences of doing something wrong on uh, like in a game. That's that's it. That's for you. Mm. Like that's for you. That's that's something that you, that affects you. If you make a mistake on a stream. You affect the broadcast. You affect your broadcasting team, <laughs> and then it's a different. But it's a different kind of hit. But yeah. it, it, it's like you said. You know, I think it helped having me ha- ha- having have done uh, match day four and match day five of last season. Yeah. Now coming into this has kind of made it a little bit easier. And to be fair, the continuity between some of the uh, some of the new the new the uh, or some of the the broadcasting team and some of the people who are locally part of the football pro team. Yeah. It's made it easier for me because I see the same faces now, so I know them by first name. It makes it yeah. easy to get comfortable, um, you know. And 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 also just a small shout out to to Harry Channon for for the job that he did. You know, uh, you know, I'd never commentated with Harry before, yeah. but he was he he not only did he coach me in between kind of shots as to go here's where you'd find your voice. You don't need to do too much. If I leave a gap or blah blah blah, you know, he'd show he kind of showed me those ropes and allowed yeah. me to kind of go further than probably what i would have normally have done had yeah. i have been just left to be the tactical guy yeah. you know i was able to kind of you know it kind yeah, of express get, myself and it was like, and it was a good balance it's, yeah to find a flow when it's somebody new you know it's it's meant to like we often have that problem not problem it's not it's not a bad problem but you do have that when you have people on the podcast or if you're doing like a collaboration with somebody on a video like okay when i stop you're waiting for somebody to jump in and then yeah. like it's just hard to get that flow but i thought you did well like i thought the two you did well and it's again it's the more familiar you get with each other like the better it's going to get yeah always the way like yeah. i'd like to think that this podcast is slightly more professional than when we started two years ago yeah i like, would think it's so just, I, yeah <laughs> not saying it's world beating or anything but it, that there's a better flow to it that and they go through the topics and that all just comes with experience and kind of finding your voice really finding what yeah i do think it was a great debut for for you so um it's going to be interesting i'm going to be interested to see you fuck up <laughs> uh, <laughs> obviously so that we can make the memes yeah um, the memes it's all about the memes yeah, it's all or, about memes. no i'm just i'm looking forward to it man because you do you do learn you do learn i think as well and it's it's probably a good segue on to Pez and Pez twenty twenty in twenty twenty. Now it's it's mad to think we are in the start of the yeah. decade, but you do kind of learn different things from watching different people play the game. If you want to, like, if you want to sit down and just watch it casually, you're not going to pay too much attention to what you're saying, the tactics or the difference in class. But you look if you want to improve your game, like there is definitely you know little bits of bits of information and stuff that you can take from it. Yeah, and that's helped further then by you guys explaining it, especially, especially when you break it down and you've yeah. obviously employed a lot of these ta- these tactics yourself playing against these guys, so you kind of know what to look out for, and it it does make for an interesting watch when you're when you're watching it. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, we we noticed it with um, with uh, with Eldridge and also with uh, the Schalke guys in, in their post match interviews, and they were like, oh, so you know, we mentioned about substitutes. Why did you pick them? Um, and O'Neill immediately mentions, well, actually, we've got two super, we got two super subs on the bench, and the room kind of, kind of went, uh, like, what does he mean by super sub? And then it was like, luckily for me to then jump in and go, oh, actually, well, super sub means this, 
you know, super sub means that actually they perform better when they're brought off the bench. So mm. I think it's McTominay and Martial who are the two that have got super sub that are able to be brought off the bench. Uh, Schalke have got the same thing with uh, Rahman and with McKenney. They're able to be brought off the bench, and it you know, and it helps, you know, and it helps to be able to explain them. it. And and you know, and if if it means then that my then my role then becomes explaining to lay people at home or Joe Bloggs at home as to why these guys are doing these tactical changes, why you know you'll start Chong over Martial and why you'll start you know different players over other players because some people might just look at that and go, well, why did he pick him for? Mm. Like why 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 have we picked player X? Like yeah. it's like the stats there that actually we don't see. Yeah. Or that I might not see. I think I even referenced it with Celtic when they were t- they they started with Bayo instead of Edouard, and I went unless they're seeing something I'm not, because obviously they may see value in a player that I don't necessarily see. And it's it's the same with with my club, and it's the same with Pez in general. You might look at your set of players and go, I've got a ton of rubbish players. Here. I might look at it and go, actually, that player's really good. That yeah. player's really good. That player's really good. Uh, I had an interesting conversation with some of my uh, kind of uh, IRL friends where. Funny enough, they brought up ratings of legends, which yeah. again we'll, we can slowly segue on to, uh, where they were saying, "Oh well, how is how is Dwight York only rated eighty four, and how is it that they're rated so much worse than what the players are today?" And I had to explain to them, uh, and again, this is kind of the the, the spooky line. Uh, I've always called it the spooky line now because Spooky was the one that made me aware to this. Is that the overall is not where the the value lies; it's their individual stats and their yeah. individual stats is what the overall goes off of. So, for example, a maxed out Ronaldo is 99 rated on left wing, but he's 101 up front because his stats lend himself to being a, a, a forward. So, you know, that I had to kind of explain to him that the stats are based on what is the value for that position. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, you know they're, their favourite player is David Beckham. They look at him at right wing and go, well, why is he only rated 87? But then when they move him into DMF, he goes up to 89. They're like, mm. well, why is he better rated at 89? Well, his stamina's good, his ball winning's good, his aggression's good, and his passing is really good. And those are and those are the stats that DMF should be looking for. Um, you know, to try and explain it to them, you know, is quite challenging at times. Mm. You know, well, it's just but, that it's just that insight, isn't it? It's there's a there's a load to Pez, like there's a lot of depth to it now people listening to this and we will be we will be talking about my club in a minute as we always do but people listening to this will say yeah but you know if i have a, a featured player he's going to be the best I, I don't need to i don't need to look for somebody else or whatever but mm-hmm. for the people that obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of random kind of stuff that happens in my club and it's not it's not it, it sometimes it's a game of chess but sometimes it's there's a lot of luck based on did he goal or you can see corner or a goal kick or whatever it is touch you know kick off or whatever but there is there is a there is a bit of depth in it player skill cards and that's always been the pez always way. Been like it's always yeah. been the, the player id and that has always been like for instance like if you have neymar in front in your team instead of somebody like hazard or like well hazard might have better stats as an amf but Neymar mm-hmm. has better shield and he's able to shield the ball and it might suit me better to be able to shield rather than yeah. just out and out pace and pass. So yeah. there's a lot there is a lot of depth when you go up a level of playing the game and wanting to be good. And I would say anybody that's fairly deep at the game does lo- do- doesn't like losing. So you do yeah. always look for the, you know, you do always look for the little the little kind of advantage that mm. you know, the nor like the maybe the, the the more casual player might know so that you have an advantage such as manual goalkeeping or something like that that it's like okay i'm going to put off somebody here when he's one one with me whereas if you're one-on-one with his goalie he mightn't do manual goalkeeping because he might know about it you know yeah yeah yeah. it's all and obviously when you're on playing in match day one and i'm sure at match day two and stuff every single guy every single competitor knows all the tricks and tips and they know everything so it's more about keeping the you know keeping it simple and executing and taking yeah. the chances so, i was just going to say it's it's more about their execution it is about anything else it's yeah. who executes who executes better you know i think but i think personal personal highlights just to touch on them uh, for me for for match day one um that bo the bo vista goal mm-hmm. the where it was a kind of a it was a passing move but it was i think it was in the back of my head knowing that it was pa1 and knowing it wasn't two or three i was kind of like damn actually i can appreciate that a whole lot more now 
and it was the little stutter step that uh, that the the captain took to make sure that his player was onside, and there was just little intricacies. And and being in a scenario where you can sit there and watch those intricacies, you kind of pick up more tips. Like mm. I've noticed, and again, this is where I'll, I'll kind of lunge into my club now. Is I've noticed playing my club now that um, the kind of the auto shielding is a lot more prominent than what I first gave it credit for. Yeah, it's massive. In the sense of it's it's huge. Yeah. And and some I uh, you know I've I've kind of surfed between streams whilst not streaming myself and and noticed that a lot of people are picking up on it as well to mm. you know I I had it earlier on I was playing co-op and saw Maradona hold off Vieira but that was because he's he, he he got himself in the way of the ball and it's like the only way you're getting that ball back is if you foul him. Yeah. You know it's is that is that right? Do we want it that way, or do we want it where there's a bit more balance? There's a bit more of a fight for the ball. Yeah, it's uh, definitely. It's definitely something that they need to probably tweak going forward because it is. It can be very frustrating when you get stuck behind there. Yeah, if you're yeah. playing against somebody like, if you're playing against somebody that knows how to auto shield and really do it like a lot, it's very, it's very frustrating. It's yeah. It's if you can throw your body into it, and more importantly, it's whether you you if you push the directions in the right direction when you're trying to short or pass yeah. them. So, but for for me, I mean, you know, as we we know, it's it's a lot of of kind of trial and error. Yeah. You know, they're not going to know what works until it doesn't work. If that makes sense, yeah. and I know, I know that is quite painful in the sense of I know some people might go, well, we shouldn't really be paying for a, a you know a full game. Then it's like, well, yes and no. You, you kind of, you know, the, the changes they're going to make, it, it, it's it's the tweaks they make mid-year, or it might even be in some cases the lack of tweaks they make mid-year. Yeah. You know, it's... And the it's stuff that to, they're choosing to, to tweak. Sorry, man. You know, what? No, go on, go on. no, I was just going to say, it's, it's the stuff that they're choosing to tweak as well. Yeah. So, you know, I looked at um, the Pez Development uh, Facebook group today and that they're, they're fixing some stuff for Steam, yeah. which is great. But I don't know how many players that's actually affecting. Yeah, you know, and that's not for me to discount PC gamers who oh, play online or, or playing free friendly lobbies. But you know, is that is that the most prioritised issue that's going on at the moment? Probably not. You know, uh, it's it's like taking it's like taking a Jenga block out one block at a time. Yeah, and you're not quite you're not quite sure what's going to fall down. Yeah, so you that's have to right kind of be. Actually. That's a right good analogy. No? Well, you have to well, you have to just be really tensive. And yeah. that's why you're kind of just you're you're taking a block out just slowly. Yeah. Like my my question, kind of to you, in terms of a curveball kind of kind of scenario, would be yeah. a case of, and again, it leads into our, our discussion around my club content and obviously the the freebies that we've yeah. had over the over the course of the Christmas period, uh, and over New Year, um, and then obviously there's been some uh, you know the 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 legends that have started to eke into GP mm. agents, yep. which I've been pleased about. Yep. Everybody, newsflash, I've been <laughs> pleased with something with that is agents for a chain. Do you think that looking over the fence at other games in regards to how quickly games are updated? So, for example, you see the lightning reactions to certain issues on FIFA. You look mm. at NBA kind of reactions to theirs. Do you think it's a case that the PES community looks at PES harshly for how little is updated during the the cycle of a game? Do you I, think it's I, a case that yeah, we, judge it, we judge it too harshly? Because personally, of... I do, and I've said this like no matter which way I, no matter what answer I give here, I'm going to upset whoever doesn't agree with me. So. Sorry to sorry to throw you a hand grenade. It's okay, man. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, I on it. I'm Dive a man of my conviction, so I never, you know, I'll say what I, I'll say what I think. I'm not going to say something just because some, some people mightn't like it or some people will like it. I'll yeah. say exactly kind of how I, I feel about it. Um, I do, and I've said that on the podcast a bit before. I kind of, I've always kind of said that, you know, we, like, it's still early in the life cycle. Konami have a plan to release a lot of agents and a lot of freebies and stuff, and it has kind of cr- come into fruition. Um, you know, with the free login bonus and like, there's a lot of stuff that has been good for it. And I do think that sometimes it's it's judged too harshly. Now, saying that and and probably contradicting myself um, as I'm known to do, <laughs> like I I do think what what's not good like isn't good enough and it does need a lot of work. Like there's a lot of stuff that needs a lot of work. Yeah, no, yeah, and I think I've I've kind of softened up a little bit 
in in regards to it. I mean, it's a Christmas miracle, uh, man. It is a Christmas. It's, it's a Christmas. <laughs> it's it, but it's only a Christmas miracle because there's the option, or there was the option for a couple of weeks where yeah. you had uh, legends that are available in GP agents. I don't mind if you have, uh, like I like I've said before, I don't mind if you have legends that are in the GP box, and then you have a box where you go. Do you know what? You're guaranteed the same legends, mm. but. It's 100 coins a go, and you could potentially get either, you know, like they've had where you guarantee a black ball and you've got a chance of it being a, a, a legend. Yeah, Just for example. There's one up at the have, moment, isn't there? Yeah, you have like a black ball only. No, but I mean, as in like instead of gold balls or silver balls or anything like that, just have here's a selection of black balls. There's some legends mixed in with it. If you want to put money into it, try your odds, see how it goes. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that yeah. because at least then you've still got the. But actually, you can come and try and get the, the Legends in the GP box, mm. but you've got the possibilities of silvers, yeah. you've got the possibility of duplicates, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I don't mind that. You know, I've I've managed to successfully, my ad, convert my two best friends to only play Pro Evo. Yeah. Um, one pal who, who I was playing with this evening, he said, yeah, sure, it's got its, it's, got its gripes. He goes, there are some things that I moan at and there are some things that I get angry at. He goes, but I still think it is a better footballing experience yeah. than FIFA, yeah. which for me was unheard of yeah. because I only got them to play Pez Light because I needed some co-op partners to play with mm. and I thought it'd be pretty cool to have on stream. Now, all of a sudden, it's now turned into they've all got they've got features, they've got partnered players, they've got, you know, because these guys go... Do you know what? I'm going to stick a tenner in. I'm going to try my luck. Yeah. You know, my pal took a half day from work today to come back because, again, avid Man United fan. Yeah. <laughs> right? He'd got Beckham through the GP agent when it was GP over Christmas. Yeah. He came back and tried Skulls or for Skulls, uh, got Skulls with his third attempt. Fuck. And he was, he was buzzing. He was yeah. absolutely buzzing because he's like, I get to play with Skulls and Beckham in the same midfield. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that in between the lot of us, because we've all kind of opened agents at some point or form or fashion, you've got legends coming out of your ears. Yeah. So you could, at any point you could have Batista, uh, Adriano, Romario, you know, playing co-op, you essentially have a dream team. They yeah. love co-op because yeah. they're like, wait a minute, it takes six players from your squad, six players from mine, six players from his, and it merges them all together. Mm. I mean, yeah. And they went, why have, why have, why is why is FIFA not done this? This thing, yeah, because co-op, co-op is a fucking massive, massive like it, it's, it's it's a huge it's, mode. Like it's a huge mode that they've not capitalized yeah. on. They haven't really promoted co-op as uh, like like as you're saying there. Like I I was the same over Christmas. I think I think a lot of people have have been harsh on it in terms of the GP, and you've been one of the strongest. Yeah, by saying listen, you know. But you have to give credit where credit is due as well, and it's you're you know you're good enough to do that. Where it's like, for me, for example, I had like six hundred and fifty thousand GP saved up from just playing co-op, basically just playing co-op with my brother. So I'm playing couch co-op with him, like absolutely yeah. having a ball. And we opened literally opened like all the agents with it, and I got Bad Astuta. I think I got, I got I got two or three legends. Anyway, I was lucky enough to get two or three legends random. Um, yeah. and a couple of black balls a couple of silvers a couple of golds but like co-op is where it's at for me that is that is where i think pez when it plays and when it's playing well the crack you have playing co-op it is unmatched yeah. by anything because your frustrations they're not really frustrations when you can see the goal because you have two other people to blame and yeah <laughs> one that can be an inquest during the replay exactly and two, it's like, what and the two fuck are you doing here yeah, and two, you, and two, you can you can ultimately work towards getting better. Yeah, I think I think that there's there's a couple of things that it lacks at the moment for me for co-op. One is there's no discernible like ladder, mm. like there's yeah, no there's not to play for. There's no the, yeah. the, you know I turned around to the boys tonight and went oh we got promoted division three and what does that mean and I literally had to turn around and go I literally don't know. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Like, it's like you don't get like you don't get like for example if you get promoted should you earn more GP trip per game. Well, you should definitely yeah, get a that, you should definitely get a promotion bonus, like yeah, that, whether that would whether it's a five be, star agent or you know yeah five, because you get because you get them or, because you get them with one v one you get you get GP bonuses yeah. so if it was a case of actually uh, you actually will get like a you know stupid amount but you'll get like a hundred k each for getting up to division one yeah 
And then for retaining Division One, you get like a hundred k for staying in there, mm. right? Or something like that. Not, yeah, yeah. not uh, there's a ballpark figure. Yeah, no, but I get like, you. I get but, you. And and the and the other thing is is that there's there's no there's no there's no ladder. And the the other thing that I would say is, which is probably the most disappointing thing, we're how many months in now? What three, four, four months in? Um, yeah. Yeah, we will be and there. I'm pretty confident, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that there hasn't been a uh, co-op uh, online challenge. No, I don't think there was. There one, no, was there one earlier in the year? I don't think there was. Yeah, I'll trust because uh, and and you know normally during those types of periods you end up having uh, you know the more players you play with, yeah, you know, for example, the more players you play with, the more GP you get per yeah, game. Yeah, the squad bonus thing, isn't it? We've not we've not had that. Yeah. Or at least not not to my recollection. But yeah. not. Or more importantly, it, it's not that frequent. Yeah. And just just give it some life. Give it something. Because honestly, if you are going down the route of you're wanting to push eFootball Pro and you're wanting to push the eFootball Open and you're trying to encourage 3v3 play and people getting used to playing together, what better way to do it than going, oh, actually, you've got this runoff mode where you can just dick about with your pals. Because you can at least go, okay, I do like this. I'd like to get involved in, in eFootball. Or I can go, actually, no, I like this. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay in my club. Either yeah. way, you can at least turn around and go, do you know what? I like this. Mm. I think in the moment, there's not enough or the, there's practically nothing that has gone into the co-op mode this year. Yeah. You know, but since even if the- they were to do something like, they were to do something like take... A lot of the stuff that Konami have in PES 2020, like, and they've had for the last couple of years, the concepts are there. It just needs to be fleshed out. So if yeah. you wanted to just have like a kind of a no commitment type of mode where you could actually still earn stuff and still have the crack and, you know, not have to think too much about tactics or whatever. Yeah. Like Konami could come out next year with PES 2021 and they could say, listen, we're going to do a co-op random selection online like mode where I, I, t- I tell you the one I tell you the one they could come out with they could turn around and go do you know what we understand that match day is where it's at we'll do a co-op match day yeah like that we'll would do a co-op, well. co-op, co-op match day as well. co- co-op match day in a different window yeah just go right you can have your singles match day and then you have your, your co-op match day mm. you imagine how much fun a co-op match day would be because mm. you'd all be trying to You'd all be trying to put a team together, trying to figure out who's going to get what team selected to make sure they're all on form. Mm. Then you're going to have all the like random tactics, and then you've then got a three v three element to it. Yeah, yeah, it would be it would be class. Like I think me and you are definitely because fairness. I don't think it's it's too far to say that co-op has kind of pulled you back in a lot. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know 100%. it's completely pulled you I've, back in. Really, I, I've I've credited my pals on stream so much, and yeah. I've even said it to them. Because you know they jokingly said, "Oh, do you want to go and play clubs?" And I'm like, "I'll be honest, guys, you've 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 reeled me back in here." Yeah. Because co-op has has kind of reinvigorated my my kind of love that I have mm. at the moment because it, it it has just it's just reinvigorated it. It's just made it so that it's you know I can I can slot pairs on and go. Do you know what? Let's go and have some fun with co-op. Like mm. I don't have to like you know before the podcast I was playing for two hours. Like just come downstairs got on with me pals we you know played four games we won three lost one the one that we lost we were kind of like eh the team was better than us the other yeah. three absolutely pummeled people yeah. and it's like that enjoyment of going do you know what actually this is really fun yeah having your your IRL pals to come and kind of give you that shot in the arm mm. not to mention the fact that you know having the casting gig has also given me a shot in the arm yeah that it's kind of made me go, actually, do you know what? Let's just go and have fun with this. Yeah. It is, because it depends on what, as as we all, as I always say, like, I always choose to kind of see things glass half full rather than glass half empty. Yeah. Like, that's just the type of personality I have. That's mm. just the type I am. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not the type of person that will just, like, take whatever is given to me. But I do choose to, if I'm going to spend my time playing a game, I want to sit down and I want to see the positives in it or else I just won't play it. You know, like I, I bought NBA 2K this year. I've been a massive fan of NBA 2K since I can't like 11, I'd say. And this year it just didn't click for me. And I just found myself not enjoying playing it. And I was like, Do you know what? I just want to play a game of Pez here. I don't want to play NBA tonight. I want to play like two or three more games in my club, play some co-op. And 
I just decided to just not play NBA 2K. <clears throat> and instead of giving out about it, shortcomings, in my opinion, I just moved on from it. And yeah. obviously people have different attachments to Pez that they've played it all their lives. And if you are any fan of football at all, you do need to have a football game in your life. So it is it is easier for me to just say, you know what, like I haven't played basketball. I've started to get the itch for it now again as the season kind of heats up in real life. Yeah. So I can see if somebody, you know, with football, if somebody is passionate about football and they're watching their team every week, Premier League or La Liga or Bundesliga or whatever, you are going to want to play Pez if you have been a Pez head all your life. So, but it is, it's 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 just about how you how you spend your time playing Pez. You know, there's more to Pez than infuriating, like, deflection fests, like, on my club. Like, there's co-op, there's Mass League. Like, mm-hmm. it, it just depends what way you want to see it. You know, if you want to sit down and, and pick apart every single film that you watch in the cinema or every single Netflix show, you can see the bad in it if you really want to. Um, I know Pez makes it easy sometimes to see the bad yes. in it because it, it can it can be very it can it can fall down on in things that it shouldn't fall down on. But yeah, that's just the way it is, man. And, and it's like with you, I I was always saying to you, even on on the podcast and talking away from the podcast, I always said to you, you know, I'm having this is the this is the first Pez in a long time that I'm enjoying. Uh, co-op and master league last year i loved co-op i love co-op online like i me and my brother played five or six hundred games yeah but i didn't really like master league last year this year i'm finding myself loading up master league restarting master league starting having like i think i've had like seven first seasons of master league and then i've restarted again just i'm just kind of addicted to it like and it's it's um it's the first year that i've actually got a good online experience and a good offline experience as in this is Pez 2020. So I think you've started to look at it now as well. Obviously, Konami have helped because they've brought in like the GP agent and they've had a lot of freebies and stuff like that with the login bonuses and legends. But I think you're starting to see it now. Look, I'm just chilling out with my two my two boys in real life. We're having the crack. We lose a game. It's just it's not really a big deal. Mm. You win a game. It's a bit of crack. You can have a slag of each other. And that's looking at it at the glass half full. So, you know, and you seem to be a lot more happy with your kind of experiences with Pez now the last couple of weeks that I've been talking to you. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Which is good as well. Not saying that we all need to be happy on the podcast. Like if we have yeah. a guest on and they're fed up with the game, it's it's fine to listen and, and do it. But there is, there's obviously something that pulls us back to Pez. Right? Yeah. You know, it has to be, it has to be some, I don't know what it is. Is it a healthy love or an unhealthy love? I don't know at this stage, but there has to be something even for people that, that are fed up with it, continue to play it. Just that those who continue to play it, such as us, well, such as me, I, I kind of look at it with a glass half full, whereas some people that continue to play it look at it with a glass half empty. So, I don't know. A difficult one. It is a difficult one. Mm. Yeah. It's just, it's just unfortunately, it, it, it's, it's, it's human nature, isn't it? You're going to, you're going to see how, you know, your perceptions are going to be, you know, they're going to be your reality. If you're having, you know, loads of stuff go wrong in the game, which you can't explain, or if you're having lag ridden games, it's, yeah. it's going to be how you perceive it to be. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, that, that's not right or wrong. It's just the way you perceive it. You know, that's just it. You know, I, I played know. a match. I played. We played a session the other day. Myself, and my brother. We played ten games, or eleven games in co-op, and we won nine of the eleven, or nine of the ten, I think. And we conceded one goal in like nine games, which is like absolutely unheard of in my club. And it was co-op, and we were just like we got lucky. You know, we got a couple of posts that were hit, but we were absolutely pummeling teams till nine ever. Yeah. And then in one game that we played against two guys, and they were they were average enough at the game. I'm not going to say they were bad. They were they were okay. They were like level fifty or whatever. Um, but they beat us. They beat us. I think they beat us like four three, but or was it five four? It was five four. But it was like we conceded five goals in one game compared to conceding one goal in nine games. And I was like, how does that even make sense? Because some of the goals they got were ridiculous like they scored from two corners they scored from a free kick they scored two from the kickoff from like a long ball over the top um and it was like 
so frustrating to lose the game but then you know once you go back into another game and you start winning again it kind of goes away and it's like i think that's why as you're saying there it, it kind of it can be hard with your you know your your like outlook of the game when mm. you do lose a game or when you do win a game you don't see any of the issues and any of the weird stuff happening when you're winning games no you know that's that's a big thing that i've learned because my brother was saying it to me he was like is that last game that we won there like four nil like we got two penalties and a, and a corner kick to win like to go three nil up and i was like yeah but we were better than him. he said yeah but you're like you know like we still got the luck we still got a couple of lucky breaks and i was like yeah i suppose we did actually <laughs> and it kind of you know what i mean it was like yeah sometimes when you're winning games you do you do you don't see the stuff that's happening to your opponent you just think you're a fucking beast and you think that you're <laughs> you know what i mean like it's it's it is in the in the eye of the beholder like but it is man it's at the end of the day it's a, it, it's a video game you know it's it's i don't know i feel like this is a current a recurrent team in our podcast where <laughs> it's like always it this, that it's it's not it's not that deep but then at the same time it is it is a huge deal because we all, all obviously always come back the Pez in some way, shape, or form. But I'm glad that you're enjoying it, man. I'm glad that you're enjoying it with the lads as well because it's there's nothing better than playing playing games with friends. I think like it's an excellent social thing to do. So when you're having fun with it, all the better rather than raging by yourself. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's much better. It's much better. Fucking hell. But um, yeah. So I just want to move on, I suppose, as we put this to to a finish we're not going to keep you guys too long in the new year just to break you in for the the round of the podcast but i want to ask you Wes, as we are at the the end of the decade and the start of a new one we put up a tweet a couple of days ago on twitter um of asking your top five pez players of the decade so it doesn't have to be that in depth i'm sure that there'll be a couple of names that spring to mind but we're actually going to go with um with you first and because i put up my i think you actually you answered the question on twitter i think but or did you no no i i oh, held didn't. i held waited. fast yeah i, mm, I waited tricky. well the, the good news for me is, is that i have a little bit thanks to the the kind of earlier um five aside uh yeah, similar to the website. It's very similar to I, have, I have a little bit of a kind of a heads up on some of the players but um first one uh would be uh i'm just gonna name them by error uh, Liverpool era Fernando Torres. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, you be talking absolute animal. Eleven. Uh, yeah, 2010, 2011 was ridiculous. Um, uh, and again, these are kind of informed from 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 you know from from previous MLO experiences. Uh, the 2013 edition of Wayne Rooney. Um, who else was? That? There's uh, the you can't do a list without going with Messi or Ronaldo. Yeah. Um. So I and I think you have to have them both. Uh, oh, do you have them both, do you? Yeah. Of course you're gonna have both. Ooh. You can't you can't walk in and not have those. And it's, <laughs> and it's a plethora full of strikers. Uh, I have to round it out with number five. You can't go wrong with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. <sighs> Serious Pez talent there. That's a, that's essentially a Nike advert in itself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is like. I've gone for more when I put it up. I kind of went for more. I went for like I left out Messi. Stein. I left you out went Messi. Stein. You yeah. went Stein. Yeah, Stein. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, if you want to look at like glitchy players, you've got Vanden Bird. Yeah. Uh, Van der Van der Merch. Van der Merch. Yeah. Yeah. Barretto, Van der Merch. Piatti. Barretto, Piatti. Fela. Yeah. Oh man. Yes. Yeah, so some guy like there was a huge reaction to it actually. With a lot of people get in touch, which is always good. But um, I went for Steen and Pez 2010 because that was one of his last, like, at the peak of his powers. When I say peak of his his powers powers. now, I think he was, like, 65 overall or something. (laughs) But he's just a fucking, he's just a legend. And then I had Ronaldo from Pez 2013. Thiago Silva from Pez 16. And then I had Mbappe from last year. He scored, like, a thousand goals in my club for me. Big Thiago Silva. This this year's featured Barrios is the best. (laughs) <laughs> well, actually, do you know who's been an absolute monster for me? I don't know. Do you have him? My club. God. Do you know your man Zabnin? I've featured, seen him a lot. The featured guy. I've seen him a lot. Oh, man. He is uh... absolutely unreal my club this year. He's like... He's like... Pat- Patrick Vieira is probably better than him, but I don't have Patrick Vieira. But yeah. this guy is... he's. I think he's better than Barrios. I just have a... I think Barrios is like... 
I just have a soft spot for him because last year as well. So it is. It, it there's been some there's been some fairly mad like players when you do think about Pez this, that have been absolute beasts yeah. in the game that have never you know reached the heights that they probably should have in real life. So what if you look cool. if you look at you look at some of them like um uh, it would have been what Bolo's ending. Yeah, <laughs> but it would have been like, you know, there's, there's, and the, and I say this on all the time during during streams. Whenever somebody brings up going, oh, do you know what? It'd be great if they had legends from X team. Think of all the players they've got. This is one of these types of questions where you could literally sit there and go, do you know what? Actually, there's so many good players. Like <laughs> selfishly for me, the year where it was young Ibon Lahore and John Carew, mm -hmm. like, like that. That's a golden era yeah. of 2010 to 2011 of Villa before we. Ended up with Gerard Houllier as manager, but I, that's 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 a memory that I I will go through in some form of therapy for the <laughs> line. Um, but like, but there's there's so many different things you could go down. You know, um, yeah. You look at Arsenal. You had Van Persie. You had Fabregas. You know, you had uh, you know, uh, if you look at Chelsea, you had Drogba, Lampard, uh, Chelsea's version of Damien Duff, Robin. Oh, there was some you know, serious teams. There's there's loads. You know, you look at Real, you would have had Real's edition of Meza Ozil, who mm. was a baller. <laughs> uh, you know, you've got Kaka, you've got like all different types of players that you could easily go, do you know what? We just put whoever in. Yeah. You could literally you could you could sit there all day. Like you could literally have like a, a podcast series on just who's your favourite five aside. Because yeah. you could easily oh, just go some amazing players in pairs. The, the madness. Just crazy. Yeah, you got the uh, thing what, about it, there's Edwin, always been there's all and I, I think that they've got that back as well, and it's probably it's gonna be a topic for a future episode where we want to get, want to kind of talk about that. There's there's something like about certain players in Pez, whether it's a player ID or like whether it's yeah. a player that does it for you that like shouldn't do it for you because he doesn't have the stats to do it, but he just somehow always pops up with a match winner or like a master league hero or whatever. I, I'll, I'll tell you who my I'll tell you my I'll tell you who my one is for this year, and he, <laughs> he's been it for the last eighteen months pretty much. Uh, Olivier Giroud. Oh yeah, absolute monster. Hey, he bangs. <laughs> Unreal. When he's on blue form, he is unplayable. <laughs> I used to always it used to always be for me in the older Pez games in Master League Online. Uh, Drogba, Drogba yeah. was always, and everyone else used to have Ronaldo up front, or they'd have like you know Totti up front, or Aguero, or Torres at the time or whoever was was there at the peak of their powers and I used to have Drogba and he used to just do absolute carnage up front so <laughs> it's mad and everyone has different opinions on Pez then and different players and I mean you only have to look at when anything every couple of, every couple of months like one of the massive like game and websites or whatever will put up a picture of the old classic default team like yes it has yeah. like a thousand retweets or two thousand likes and like it obviously Pez is obviously like fondly remembered by a lot of people, even if they don't play it anymore. So, yeah, I, um, I would venture to say that if you if you don't play Pez now, you'll still know uh, you'll still know the name of the starting goalkeeper of the ML uh, of the uh, of the Master League default team. Yeah, definitely. You'll, you'll, know you'll still know. Anyway. You'll still you'll still know uh, Stramer and Jarich <laughs> centre backs. You'll still know Ruskin, who was your sub left back. Yeah. You'll still remember Mako, who was your sub right midfielder, and Berche and Hamson. And Nyorgo and and all of these like just random names that come in, uh, Himelez, the 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 Spanish left winger. Like you remember all of these, like Esp Espinas, like all of them. You, you, they all they all would come flooding back to anybody, and that was the thing that got my pal back into it because yeah. he didn't know. He basically he went, what 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 do you mean master league? And then he went, he stopped, and he went, wait a minute. You remember the thing about Castolo and blah 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 blah. And I went, yeah. And he went, I'm sold. He goes, I fucking love Master League. <laughs> like, and I was like, well, they have a new version of it. He's like, don't care. I'm happy enough to play with the default team. Don't care who they are. I'll play with it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. You bit harder than I thought you would for this. Like, and then he saw my club, and the rest is history. Amazing what a bit of nostalgic nostalgia can do. Well, they've the, the two of them have now just turned around and gone. We're not, we're not buying FIFA next year. Yeah, it was like we're we're just not. He goes, I, they've literally gone. I don't care what that whatever they're trying to chuck at it. He goes, it's just not happening because now obviously they they you know they know what obviously Pesh Universe does. 
and not to toot our own horn on our own podcast, but now that you know what Pesh Universe does, what they've seen, the fact that the community puts along, you know, they saw my custom kits from NEM and yeah. they're like, how did you get hold of them? And I'm like, there's a guy, there's a guy I know who does really superb stuff. And they were like, did you pay him for it? I was like, well, of course I did because I'm not an invalid. I will pay him <laughs> for stuff. Um, you know, and it's like, they're like, wow, that's really cool that you can actually do that. And that you, they, they're finding the little nuances in Pez that you don't get in FIFA. Mm. Their reaction to the ball hitting the stanchion behind the goal. Like yeah. one of them noticed it where they like pinged and they saw the thing vibrate and they went, Oh, what? Do you see that? And they were like, <laughs> right. That, actually, no, nah, that is like a small little thing. They're yeah. like, they're ones for like the smaller details of things. So it was like, you know, they've, they're, they're really onto it. And, and it's, it's good for me because it just, you know, it gives me far more of an excuse than I ever did to, to, to play, to play co-op because mm. it's something that they want to do. And yeah. if they want to do it, it gives me a perfect opportunity to go and earn some GP. But it's definitely like, again, it all goes back to like, it's it's about playing it and enjoying it. And that's that's the biggest thing I think that them lads are are doing. You know, they're they're they want to enjoy it. Like they want to actually have fun and stuff with it. So that is kind of infectious then for you. Like when you're talking to them about it and they're saying, "Oh, I you know I spun him and I got Beckham here. I got you know Mbappe here. I can't wait to play with him later with G." Blah blah blah. You know. So yeah. Uh, so like I look at I look at I look at some of their lineups and I'm just like, you disgust me with the players you've got. <laughs> like like one of them has like Lewandowski just writing, and I'm just yeah. like I hate you because if, if the, and again, shout out to something that might be wanting to be done here. If you've got the trade function to just trade a player to somebody else, that like not put them on a market because that could easily be manipulated. Mm. But I think if you had a a peer to peer trading, mm. so for example, kind of like how you would have it with uh, you know like you could match up with a friend request and you go like say for example I played you tomorrow you've got uh, you've got Griezmann who I don't have yeah. and I have um, uh, Ebra when they eventually put him back in the game for playing for AC he'll be a monster like, I think when they put him back right? in <laughs> so for, yeah I know that, I know I know and he'll be the first port of call for anybody who's probably got three gold or black balls whatever yeah. they choose to put him as he'll be the first port of call for people to trade in again um, because they'll all just want to see his face because it's ridiculously well done whenever they do it. <laughs> but like it, it should just then be a case of, Oh, actually I sent you a friend request on PSN. Uh, you accept it with a message. I go, Hey, actually do you fancy trading for this? Okay, cool. Meet you in the trade function. Bam. Trade. Boom, 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 boom. Done, done. And then that way then it's, it's kind of how you would have the link cable for, for Pokemon. Whereas mm. you just see one player switch over to the other one, job done. Yeah, yeah, that, that, definitely, that, that, yeah, that would get, be a that's function. Definitely the have. easiest way that it could do it is the Pokemon style. Yeah, you just know, literally just and... have it as a a peer to peer. No, no marketplace for it, not yet anyway. Yeah, do it where it's a case of okay, well, we'll try it peer to peer. We'll see how that goes, and then evolve it to a marketplace if that's what you you want to do. Yeah, I would say I would say that. Um, uh, you know, a lot of content was lost for YouTubers for or for FIFA when they took away the option for Trade. direct, direct trading. Yeah, because obviously they used to have pink slip series, and again, it opens it up a little bit for that as well. Yeah. It opens it up for content creators, and they go, "Okay, well, I could put a wager on the line." Uh, I know that uh, LB Games does his black ball challenge, where it's mm -hmm. like, "Oh, you have to release those players." Actually, if you just went, actually, I'm going to put my Ronaldo on the line. You're going to put your Swine's diagram. We're going to have a game, yeah. and then back, whoever wins gets the part. Sweet. Yeah, it would be cool, all right, wouldn't it? It's it's just something for just them little to little things to like that to, to broaden it up a bit to make yeah. it more you know, obviously you'd have to monitor it and you'd have to really kind of balance it, but they're all things that you could think of. The idea and the concept of it could be done, I think, quite simply as you know, maybe even limit trades to three a day or three every twenty four hours or you know, or you, like or you trade you or you it. or you just limit it to ball rarity. Yeah, you, go, you could do that. I can too, trade yeah. I can trade my black ball for one of your black balls. Yeah. Not oh, I can trade my white ball for your black ball. Yeah, exactly. Things like that. Yeah. Just a, yeah, and I think I think I think that they I think that Pez twenty twenty with the I think it's getting better and better. And we said this actually on podcast. Geez, it was about three months ago, where I kind of think I said it, or it could have been Shales actually said it that he was like, 
you know, Pez will start to probably come into its own. Or maybe it was you. It was like Pez will probably start to come into its own like January, February. And then that's when Pez will be playing the best. Because that when I was playing it the other night, I literally could have... I, uh, only for I had to go to bed, I was like, I, I want one more game. Let's just keep playing. Like, it was playing <laughs> so well. It was just, like, the passing was perfect. Everything was everything was great. We lost the game. It was like, yeah, okay, just forget about it. Move on to the next one. We'd be better. We'll learn from that. Um, because I do still think that the core gameplay is at a high high level. So it's just about broadening it out with content and then rewarding people with some grind aspects Then casually bring in organically bring in some stuff like trade players yeah to player trades stuff like that i definitely think that's that's the way to go um but yeah man that is it that's 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 pretty much that's pretty much it for the return of the podcast tonight 2020 good a good catch up as usual mm-hmm. um now obviously you're flying out tomorrow so we're going to be keeping an eye on you and hopefully that you do an amazing job as you usually did on the or as you usually did as you usually do um, <laughs> on match day one. So best luck on that man as usual from all of us. And uh, yeah, Cheers, if man. anyone is listening, this will probably be going live. Probably get it up. I'll probably get it up quick enough depending on how lazy I am. Hard I am, but we will probably try and get it up quick enough. I think the best day to usually upload is like Monday or Tuesday. I found, um, mm-hmm. we do usually upload on the Thursday, but we'll probably change it to Monday or Tuesday because it gives us kind of the weekend to record, edit and get it up. So probably makes a bit more sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it, man. That's, that's, uh, that is our first one back of 2020 and we will be continuing on maybe not every week, but probably every every two weeks anyway minimum um yeah definitely until we start to start to hear a bit of news on pez 2021 it feels crazy to say but <laughs> i think there's going to be a low i think this year is going to be a massive year for gaming like especially with with all the new consoles coming out at christmas time and with all the new games i see that i see that um the new batman game was being teased on twitter there tonight the, the next arkham game so it's going to be an interesting year um like Last of, Last of Us Two is out, and all these good games. So, all that's missing is a bit of time for us to play them. But um, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm gonna let you do the outro, and uh, I will I will talk to you all later. Don't forget to check us out and subscribe on iTunes and subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. And where else are we? SoundCloud as well, Wes. I think it is. So yeah, we're all- yeah. Peace out, everybody. This has been the first episode back of uh, the uh, Pez Universe podcast of 2020. And uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Take care, guys.